Siderius Nuncius is a short astronomical treatise published in New Latin by Galileo Galilei on March 13, 1610. It was the first published scientific work based on observations made through a telescope, and it contains the results of Galileo's early observations of the imperfect and mountainous moon, the hundreds of stars that were unable to be seen in either the Milky Way or certain constellations with the naked eye, and the Medicean stars that appear to be circling Jupiter. The Latin word nuncius was typically used during this time period to denote messenger, however, it was also rendered as message, though the title Siderius Nuncius is usually translated into English as Sidereal Messenger. Many of Galileo's early drafts of the book and later related writings indicate that the intended purpose of the book was simply to report the news about recent developments in astronomy, not to pass himself off solemnly as an ambassador from heaven. Therefore, the correct English translation of the title is Sidereal Message. A copy of the original edition is a valuable rare book and as of December 2010 has sold at auction for USD $662,500, including premium telescope. Although it is unclear who built the first telescope, its invention is commonly credited to Hans Lippershey, a German-Dutch lens maker. The telescope allows the user to view distant objects as if they were much closer and larger. Galileo was one of the first to use the telescope to view and describe celestial bodies. One of Galileo's first optical cannons, as he referred to them, had eight to ten enlargements and was made out of lenses that he had ground himself. This increased to the 20 enlargement telescope that he used to make the observations in Siderius Nuncius. Content Siderius Nuncius contains more than 70 drawings and diagrams of the Moon, certain constellations such as Orion, Pleiades, and Taurus, and the Medicean stars of Jupiter. Galileo's text also includes descriptions, explanations, and theories of his observations. Moon. In observing the moon, Galileo saw that the line separating lunar day from night was smooth where it crossed the darker regions of the moon but quite irregular where it crossed the brighter areas. For this he deduced that the darker regions are flat, low-lying areas, and the brighter regions rough and mountainous. Basing his estimate on the distance of sunlit mountain tops from the Terminator, he judged, quite accurately, that the lunar mountains were at least four miles high. Galileo's engravings of the lunar surface provided a new form of visual representation. Besides shaping the field of selenography, the study of physical features on the moon, stars. Galileo reported that he saw at least ten times more stars through the telescope than are visible to the naked eye, and he published star charts of the belt of Orion and the star cluster Pleiades showing some of the newly observed stars. With the naked eye observers could see only six stars in the Taurus constellation through his telescope. However, Galileo was capable of seeing 35, almost six times as many. When he turned his telescope on Orion, he was capable of seeing 80 stars, rather than the previously observed nine, almost nine times more. In Siderius Nuncius, Galileo revised and reproduced these two star groups by distinguishing between the stars seen without the telescope and those seen with it. Also, when he observed some of the nebulous stars in the Ptolemaic star catalogue, he saw that rather than being cloudy, they were made of many small stars. For this he deduced that the nebulae and the Milky Way were congeries of innumerable stars grouped together in clusters too small and distant to be resolved into individual stars by the naked eye.
Medicean stars. In the last part of Siderius Nuncius, Galileo reported his discovery of four objects that appeared to form a straight line of stars near Jupiter. On the first night he detected a line of three little stars close to Jupiter parallel to the ecliptic. The following nights brought different arrangements and another star into his view, totaling four stars around Jupiter. Throughout the text, Galileo gave illustrations of the relative positions of Jupiter and its apparent companion stars as they appeared nightly from late January through early March 1610 that they changed the positions relative to Jupiter from night to night and yet always appeared in the same straight line near. It persuaded Galileo that they were orbiting Jupiter. On January 11th after four nights of observation he wrote, I therefore concluded and decided unhesitatingly that there are three stars in the heavens moving about Jupiter, as Venus and Mercury round the Sun, which at length was established as clear as daylight by numerous subsequent observations. These observations also established that there are not only three, but four, erratic sidereal bodies performing the revolutions round Jupiter. The revolutions are so swift that an observer may generally get differences of position every hour. Quote. In his drawings, Galileo used an open circle to represent Jupiter and asterisk to represent the four stars. He made this distinction to show that there was in fact a difference between these two types of celestial bodies. It is important to note that Galileo used the terms planet and star interchangeably, and both words were correct usage within the prevailing Aristotelian terminology. At the time of Siderius Nuncius's publication, Galileo was a mathematician at the University of Padua and had recently received a lifetime contract for his work in building more powerful telescopes. He desired to return to Florence and in hopes of gaining patronage there, he dedicated Siderius Nuncius to his former pupil who later became the Grand Duke of Tuscany, Cosimo Tuda Medici. In addition, he named his discovered four moons of Jupiter the Medicean stars, in honor of the four royal Medici brothers. This helped him receive the position of chief mathematician and philosopher to the Medici at the University of Pisa. Ultimately, his effort at naming the moons failed, for they are now referred to as the Galilean moons. Reception The reactions to Siderius Nuncius, ranging from appraisal and hostility to disbelief, soon spread throughout Italy and England. Many poems and texts were published expressing love for the new form of astronomical science. Three works of art were even created in response to Galileo's book, Adam Elsheimer's The Flight into Egypt, Lodovico Sigli's Assumption of the Virgin, and Andrea Sacchi's Divine Wisdom. In addition, the discovery of the Medicean stars fascinated other astronomers astronomers, and they wanted to view to the moons for themselves. Their efforts set the stage for the modern scientific requirement of experimental reproducibility by independent researchers. Verification versus falsifiability. Dot saw their origins in the announcement of Siderius Nuncius. But many individuals and communities were skeptical. A common response to the Medicean stars was simply to say that the telescope had a lens defect and was producing illusory points of light and images. Those saying this completely denied the existence of the moons. That only a few could initially see and verify what Galileo had observed supported the supposition that the optical theory during this period could not clearly demonstrate that the instrument was not deceiving the senses. Quote, by naming the four moons after the Medici brothers and convincing the Grand Duke Cosimo II of his discoveries, the defense of Galileo's reports became a matter of state. Moran notes. The court itself became actively involved in pursuing the confirmation of Galileo's observations by paying Galileo out of its treasury to manufacture spy glasses that could be sent through ambassadorial channels to the major courts of Europe. 
Several astronomers, such as Thomas Harriot, Joseph Gautier de Livatel, Nicolas Claude Fabry de Paris, and Simon Marius, published their confirmation of the Medicean stars after Jupiter became visible again in the autumn of 1610. Marius, a German astronomer who had studied with Tycho Brahe, was the first to publish a book of his observations. Marius attacked Galileo in Mundus Jovialis by insisting that he had found Jupiter's four moons before Galileo and had been observing them since 1609. Marius believed that he therefore had the right to name them which he did, he named them after Jupiter's love conquests, Io, Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto. But Galileo was not confounded, he pointed out that being outside the church, Marius had not yet accepted the Gregorian calendar and was still using the Julian calendar. Therefore, the night Galileo first observed Jupiter's moons was January 7, 1610 on the Gregorian calendar, December 28. 1609 on the Julian calendar although Galileo did indeed discover Jupiter's four moons before Marius Io, Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto are now the names of Galileo's four moons. Controversy with the Church Galileo's drawings of an imperfect moon directly contradicted Ptolemy's and Aristotle's cosmological descriptions of perfect and unchanging heavenly bodies made of quintessence. Before the publication of Sidereus Nuncius, the Church accepted the Copernican heliocentric system as strictly mathematical and hypothetical. However, once Galileo began to speak of the Copernican system as fact rather than theory, it it introduced a more chaotic system, a less than godly lack of organization. Quote, in fact, the Copernican system that Galileo believed to be real challenged the scripture, which referred to the sun rising and the earth as unmoving. The conflict between Galileo and the church ended in 1633 with his being sentenced to a form of house arrest by the church. Translations English Albert Van Helden, translation with introduction, conclusion and notes, Galileo Galilei, Sidereus Nuncius, or the Sidereal Messenger, Chicago and London, the University of Chicago Press, 1989, XII plus 127 pp, ISBN 9780226279039. Edward Stafford Carlos, Translations with Introduction and Notes, The Sidereal Messenger of Galileo Galilei, and a part of the preface to Kepler's Dioptrics. Waterloo Place, London, Oxford and Cambridge, January 1880. 148 pp. ISBN 9781151499. 499,646. William Marche and Tiziana Bashali, translated from the Latin by William R. Che, introduction and notes by William Marche and Tiziana Bashali. Galileo's Sidereus Nuncius, a sidereal message. Sagamore Beach, M.A., Science History Publications, USA, 2009. VIII plus 115 pp ISBN 9780881353754 Stillman Drake, Telescopes, Tides, and Tactics, A Galilean Dialogue About the Starry Messenger and Systems of the World, including translation of Galileo's Sidereus Nuncius, London, University of Chicago Press, 1983. 256 pp. ISBN 9780226162317. Stillman Drake, Discoveries and Opinions of Galileo, includes translation of Galileo's Sidereus Nuncius, Doubleday, Anchor, 1957. 320 pp. ISBN 9780385092395. French Isabel Pantin. 
Siderius Nuncius, Le Message de Salade, Paris, Belle Lettre, 1992. Assen B0028 7 JLK. Fern on Hallen, Le Message des Etoiles, France, Points, 1992. ISBN 9782757812259.